So thank you very much for inviting me along today to come and gate crash. I'm not a Googler. Um, I'd like, quite like to move in here though. There's quite a few bean bags up there. I could just sneak into a corner and they'll never know that I'm here. Um, I am here to talk about enterprise social networks. And I'm here to talk about communication and how it all fits together. Um, and how does it work if you're not Google? Um, Show my little figures, my little Lego chaps. I'm a big Lego fan. I went to um, Legoland Windsor uh, two weeks ago and it was absolutely fantastic. And very similar in terms of the perception that you have of Lego as a culture, I think, and how you think things work um, at Google. So this is me on a page, essentially. Um, so I run my own internal communications consultancy, all things I see, and have the privilege of working with a number um, of really diverse clients, really, um, helping them to achieve communication excellence. That's everything from um, tiger keepers at London Zoo to train drivers on Heathrow Express and um, what unites people and what, what um, regardless of where you work and which organisation um, you're in, the essence of good communication remains the same. The world of work, as we've been hearing today, is, is changing, and I wanted to have a think about what is it that influences us, what is it that influences our employees, and what influences our communication. And for me, it's, it's many and, and all of these things we're seeing expectations from our employees shifting constantly. You know, people are blogging, they're writing externally about what we're doing internally in our organisations. And the lines between internal and external communication are blurring and shifting. And for many organisations, they're really capitalising on that and really understanding how their employees can be their brand advocates. And the benefits of having a peek into your culture when you're recruiting, for example, if people can read... Um, what it's really like to work where you work. And I'll share with you um, some examples of people who I think are doing that very, very well. Organisational communication is changing. I've been working in internal communications for the last 11 years. And what I do today and what I, how I started my career is very, very different. And the reason for that is because employees now have a voice. But more than that, they have a voice and they're sharing it externally, and they're using social media to do that. They're using um, their own personal Facebook accounts to do that. You know, they're sharing what it's like to work inside our organisations. And if you think about internal communication as a product, um, I wanted to think through what does it look like. And for me, there are, if it was on a, on a packet, there are three key ingredients, and it's speed, clarity, and information. No longer is it good enough anymore for our employees to wait for the quarterly printed newsletter to come out to get their information. Um, the clue's in the name, it's news, it needs to be new. Um, so what we're seeing in our organisations is that our people, our employees want to communicate in real time. It's not even enough to have a weekly email newsletter or some stories on the internet. They want to give their view, they want to have their say. They want to see a blog from the CEO and say, well, I don't agree with that, or if they're brave, or um, this is what I think, this is how I feel. So the expectations are, are shifting and we're piling more and more elements on. So we're not only you know, focusing on speed and clarity and, and information to have, I like to describe it as a single source of truth. For employees, they expect us internally to be able to trust our information. We need to provide a single source of truth. So when they look at um, a blog from the CEO or if they look um, at our internal communication, they know that what they're reading is right and what they're reading is accurate. Excuse me. We heard already about some of the influences on um, the world of work and things that are really um, shaking things up. So we've heard about uh, the different generations, for example, you know, four different generations inside Google. And for me, I think that there are three key areas where expectations are shifting. Um, certainly generational. Um, I am the mummy of a a little girl is going to be two next month, and her expectations of technology are just staggering. It astounds me. She can swipe and pinch her way through things that just, in a way that I couldn't even imagine, I didn't need to teach her. Intuitively, she knows how things work, and intuitively, she gets cross when things don't work. My television doesn't do anything, and she stands there jabbing at it, getting more and more cross, the fact that it doesn't respond, because to her, things should talk back to her, things should respond with her. Now think about what, it, what would it be like when she joins the workplace? What would this world look like in, say, you know, 15, 20 years' time? Well, not 15, maybe that's quite young, isn't it? Um, but, you know, what, what would it look like? Um, 
how will her organisations she's working, how will they communicate? How will they collaborate? Technology expectations have shifted. I am sure if I ask for a show of hands in the room who has better technology at home than they have at work, it will probably be most of us, right? We have computers that work that crash. We have, um, we're just used to it. The collaboration and the communication that we do at home, as soon as we go through, through to our workplace doors or place of work or our factories, stops. The way that we are used to sharing and liking and commenting with our friends and our family, we stop that when we get into our workplaces. So what's happening now is that employees expect more. They expect more from their communication, um, and rightly so. And culturally, things are really changing. Um, enterprise social networks, for example, um, and the whole world of social media, really, was the playground of the techies and, and of the geeks. And what we're seeing now is it's moved onto the commercial floor, onto the trading floor, where reputations of organisations can rise and fall in a single tweet. So we need to know this stuff, and we need to get familiar with it, we need to understand it. However, massive, massive caveat, many, many, many things remain the same. So for, if you're sitting here thinking, you know, I'm not sure about this whole social networking thing, and I'm not sure whether this is right for me, and culturally, is it right for, our, for, you know, for us as an organisation? The fundamental point is the whole reason you're looking into using enterprise social networks or looking at collaborative software is how can you as an organisation facilitate employees to have two-way conversations? That's it. You can give it a fancy title, but essentially that's it. That's always been the purpose of good, effective communication, and, and that remains just that the tools and options available to us um, are increasing. It's all about people, it's all about conversations, and it's all about connections. One of the most fantastic things about using um, an enterprise social network is the ability to, for people to surface up who you may never heard of before within your organisations. People suddenly have a voice. They always had one anyway, but they had it... Um, had conversations at the water cooler or they had it on the factory floor or they had it in the restaurant and you couldn't see what they were talking about. However, now what we're seeing um, is through the rise of social media and through the rise of connected conversations, you can really have a sense of what your culture looks like and what it feels like because your employees are telling you. I'm going to move out of the way so you can read this. Um, what's the point in this? So what's, what's the point in thinking through using um, enterprise social networks? Well, I've really listed some of the benefits um, here, um, I have the privilege of being on the social media panel of the Charleston Institute of Public Relations. And um, we've written two books on um, all things internal comms and all things PR and how to look at using social media inside organisations. And we wrote them purely using Google+, purely using Google Docs um, and, us and using Hangouts. So I've been using um, Google+, since uh, 2011. And for me, it's part of the way that I do business. It's just part of the way that I connect with my peers. Um, and you know, when I was on maternity leave, for example, I was still able to play a really active part in that community via Hangouts. It didn't matter that I had Daisy on my lap. You know, it, it, that's what the mute button's for. Um, I could still connect with the people who are important to me. So the benefits of using social media, I think, is you're opening up new feedback channels in a way that's never really existed before. Um, and you're encouraging collaboration and communication across silos and across geographies. And that's hugely exciting for us as people who are interested in organisations and the way that they work. Because we can connect our people. Um, I've written 500 um, posts on my blog over the last five years. And I've been researching how to use social media for internal communication for that whole time. And some of the stories that I enjoy the most and the articles that I'm... Um, loved publishing, I have been guest, guest articles. I've asked people to share what really works, what's the reality. So you can say all these lovely shiny things and you can have you know, the most fantastic salespeople in the world saying, promising you things. But I want to know the reality. What's the reality of using these tools and technologies? And the reality is it's about a mindset shift. It's about a behavioural shift. So inside organisations, um, through the guest articles that I've published and a couple of people in the room, Tony from NBC Universal, where are you? Um, who wrote a guest article about how his organisation has been using, um, his previous organisation, using a, an enterprise social network to really bring their employees together. So they were sharing photographs out of their office window. This is my view of the world. And this is, wasn't designed by the comms team as let's all take a photograph out of our window and it's not an, a comms thing or an HR thing. It's an employee thing. But there's one thing I'd like to encourage you to take away is that all of these conversations is all about 
businesses. It's all about people. It's not about comms or HR leading the charge. It's about our employees and our people leading the charge. Our role really is to facilitate them. Horizontal networking is quite a weird phrase. It sounds a bit like something out of More magazine, I think. But um, what it means really is regardless of what you do, regardless of where you work, regardless of what your business card says, you have a say, you have a voice. And the benefits of enterprise social networks are, it doesn't matter what any of those things are, it doesn't matter what your role is, what, what your geography is. You can form part of a community and you can form part of a conversation. It's all encompassing, it's absolutely interactive and you can pick and choose who and what to engage with. Um, it's not right for everybody. You know, social media isn't a magic bullet that's suddenly going to take a very hierarchical, very structured organisation and make it into an open and collaborative um, place to work. It just doesn't work like that. It takes time it, because you're thinking about behavioural change. And, you know, particularly as people who are HR professionals, you know about the change curve, you know about the stages that people need to work through. It takes time to invest in money and resources to make this stuff work, but it's worth it. So what happens when companies use social media internally? People ask me all the time, I need some evidence, Rachel, I need some stats, I need to go to my business partners and this all looks great, but give me, give me the stats, so here's the good stuff. A McKinsey study, which goes down well with your IT colleagues, um, looked at the social economy. How can you unlock productivity and value using social technologies? And for me, what's exciting about that is particularly messages become content. So it's no longer tell and sell, spray and pray, you know, one-way communication from organisations to their employees. What we're doing now is communicating with them and for them. And that's a very different um, mindset to be in. And seeing as we're in Google, it makes sense to talk about search. Um, when you use social media internally, you create a searchable record of knowledge which can reduce the time employees spend looking for company information. How many times do you hear people say, well, I have a sense that someone, someone somewhere who works for us must know this, or we must have done this before. Um, how do I find that person? So when you use um, social media internally, what you're doing is you are creating a searchable record of here is what we know. And more importantly, I, I view, I view um, enterprise social networking as giving you a sense of this is what you do know, and also it reveals what you don't know. So when you're thinking through, you know, you've got an employee who's got an idea and they want to say, there must be a different way of doing things. Or, have we tried this before? If they're sending emails to various people, they're trying to work out who do I need to email, who do I need to ask? It's a very transactional way of communicating and it's a very closed way of communicating. Some of the benefits of using social media internally is that it opens those conversations up. You can suddenly see, someone can go, oh yeah, we tried that, didn't work. Or you may find someone, another side of the globe to you, I'm really working on that. So you can see that productivity increases as visibility increases of conversations. Does anyone recognise this, the Edelman Trust Barometer? Marvellous, Catherine does in the room. So I love this, this is really good. So the Edelman Trust Barometer comes out every single year and it's a study on trust, funnily enough. Um, they survey 32,000 people globally across 26 countries. And what they show is that peer-to-peer -peer is the most trusted form of communication. Excuse me. And peer-to-peer -peer is described by Edelman as people like me. So I trust people like me. More so than CEOs. That's quite a difficult conversation to have with a CEO. Um, more so than governments. People trust people like them. So what we're seeing is that Communication flow used to be, you know, you have your CEO message goes out, and everyone reads it, obviously. Um, then it goes down, you have senior managers and line managers, and this whole chain of events of this is how communication should work in an organisation. Well, that's not true anymore. What we're seeing now is there's a new dynamic and there's a new um, influences that are coming into play, and that comes from our customers, it comes from our unions, it comes from our stakeholders and our shareholders. So what it means is we've gone from a very fixed monologue um, into a very open and collaborative way of communicating, it's moved into dialogue. What do you think of that? By 2016, enterprise social networks will become the primary communication channels for noticing, deciding and acting on information relevant to work activities. That's not that far away. That's two years away. Is that scary? Yeah, lots of scary, lots of scary faces. Okay, this comes from a report from Gartner, also very good to share with your IT colleagues. 
It was an analyst report that came out in 2013. And they were looking at how big is this? How, how aware do we need to be of this as organisations? How does this work? There's a huge caveat to that. Gartner say that this is going to be the way that people communicate. However, between um, 2013 and 2015, 80% of social network efforts won't, will fail they won't achieve the intended benefits due to inadequate technology, uh, leadership and overemphasis on technology. That's enormous. That's a huge figure. And for me, that's really important because it's all about, you know, if, if you're doing an HR-led initiative or a comms-led initiative, that's not the right mindset to be in and thinking about social, using social media internally or enterprise social networks. It's a business-led initiative. And if your social strategy isn't linked with your business strategy, it's not going to work. So the important thing now is for organisations to equip their leaders to involve them in decision-making processes, to really work with them to, when you're rolling out an enterprise social network, when you're looking at a different way of communicating or collaborating, that it feels like now this is the way we do business. It's not just led by HR or comms or, or IT. This for me in a nutshell is the whole point. The whole point of enterprise social networks is to make invisible conversations visible. So if you had, and I talked about ideas before, if you have an employee with an idea who used to email the finance director, for example, I have an idea of how we can save money. I know how we can make this widget a bit differently. Um, there's a, quite a famous story, I don't know if it's an urban myth, maybe it is, about um, an airline, I think it was American Airlines, who saved millions and millions of pounds by removing one olive from their salads. You know that story? And in the news even this week about how the 16-year-old revealed that the American government could save millions and millions of dollars every year by changing their font. So there are good ideas that happen inside our organisations, but we can't see them. One of the key benefits of having enterprise social networks or having a culture of collaboration and communication that, that works and that's visible is that other people can pitch in and share their ideas. And negativity is good. People get very worried by this. They say, oh, no, but everyone's going to say that things are really, really rubbish. Yeah, they are. But they'll be saying it anyway. At least have a look. At least you can respond to it and you can see it. If those conversations are happening in places that are invisible, like the smoking shelter or you know, in, in the restaurant, um, you can't see and you can't react and respond. How many people in the room have, have got these questions going through their minds at the moment? Yeah, lots and lots. Um, all of these things are important. All of these things are the reality of our works, workplaces is that when we think about being a bit brave, we think about doing something a little bit differently, um, we have these concerns, and they're valid, but they're not insurmountable. They're, they're not that difficult to overcome with the right conversations. Um, and if you're starting, particularly I talked about, you know, all of, the, all of these thoughts should be a business-led initiative, not an HR or an IT or a comms. My advice to you is to gather your allies and also gather the people who are the negative voices. Because if you work together cross-functionally, lots of my clients are doing this at the moment, and we're bringing people together across organisations to say, we think this is where we want to be, we think this is how we want to work, how do we make it happen? And then you work through all of those different areas. This is actually a quote from my husband. Um, he works in IT, not, not for Google. I uh, quite like him too, though. <coughs> um, and he always says that you need to trust employees to do the right thing, then assume they'll do the wrong thing. And I love that, and I've stolen it with abandon, and he keeps telling me off, I need to credit him. So this is John Miller. And um, he applies that to an IT um, mindset. He applies that when he does work for, with his, his clients on, on IT. And I love it, and I, I am proud to steal it, because it's, for me, it's all about creating flexibility within boundaries, is how you should approach thinking through collaborative um, ways of working, is tell your employees what you expect of them. Get them to work with you on you know, guidelines and principles. I've got 320 social media guidelines on my blog because I couldn't find them, um, so I started to collate them. And it, yeah, 320 now. It's, it's, it's looked at every single day, about three or 400 people a day access um, that because people are interested in knowing what works for other people and they want to know what the guidelines are and what the boundaries are. But trust is the most important thing. Dean Royals, who's the NHS employer's CEO, has a beautiful quote. He says, we trust our, our staff with our patients' lives. Why wouldn't we trust them using social media? And you can't really argue with that. I promised you I'd, I'd share some storytelling with you um, of who, who's using what and what's working. For me, here are some examples. Um, 
behind me of who's sharing their stories, their internal stories externally, which works very well um, to help build up positive perceptions of your brand and your organisations. People have a sense of how you work. Sainsbury's are doing it. They're all using YouTube. Sainsbury's are doing it. It's not just the big boys. At the bottom is a council in Wales um, who have been sharing stories of their gritters out on the road, um, doing Elvis impressions, as you do, um, singing about in the depot. Oh, sorry, that was terrible. Um, but it works. It works because they're finding ways to use social media externally to share their internal stories to help build up the perceptions that you have of them. My final thought is this. Everything that can be invented has been. Now, this quote was, was said by the US Commissioner of Patents in 1899. There's been quite a few things invented since 1899 to now. And my final thought is, is this, is that we don't really know what comes next. We don't really know what the next bit of technology will be or what, what, you know, how, how people will be communicating in the future. But what we do know is you know how your employees work, you know how your culture works. So my advice to you is make decisions that are right for your culture. Don't be scared by new technologies or new ideas, but you know instinctively what works. Um, and to quote Facebook, you know, move fast and break things. Don't be afraid to experiment and try things out. Um, and that's me. Thank you very much for your time.